right, brand new Zoologist Perfumes fragrance out now. Have you heard about it? It's Cow. Did you know that this was coming out? Well, I have it in my hands and I'm going to let you know all about Cow. Plus, let you know some of my favorite Zoologist Perfumes. And where does Cow fit in there? You're going to find out coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Zoologist Perfumes' latest fragrance, Cow. It's a milky lactonic fragrance, and I really enjoy these kind of fragrances. They're very, very cozy, and they have this very, very soothing creaminess about them, which makes for a very, very relaxing wearing experience. But this is not your typical milky lactonic fragrance. It's totally different than what I was expecting. So I've got all the details on it for you today, and also I'm going to let you know a lot about some of my favorite uh, zoologist uh, perfumes scents, as I was saying. But where does cow end up on the list? You'll find out before I get to the fragrances. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So are you a fan of zoologist perfumes, fragrances? What is your favorite? Put a comment down so I can find out. Also, do you enjoy milky lactonic fragrances? And if you have a favorite, let me know. Put a comment down so I can find that out. But Cow just came out. It's a perfume created by Nathalie Feistauer. It's a 2022 launch. It comes in Exhalate the Parfum concentration. Sells for 60 ml for $165. There is that limited edition bottle too. It's a little more than the original bottle, I think. This is considered a green floral fragrance. There you have it. That is key to understand this particular fragrance. So if you're used to wearing lactonic milky fragrances that go into the gourmand direction, this one does not go into that direction. So it's kind of a breath of fresh air to experience something like this with a green floral experience. And the thing is, the, the box that the fragrance comes in kind of basically gives you an idea of what you're going to smell. For me, even though there's loads of green touches here, I'm getting a very grassy experience, almost like the cow going to the, you know, where they eat the grass and and eventually becomes milk kind of a thing. I'm getting that kind of an experience. And cows are some of my favorite animals. I really, really love cows because we consume a lot of cows products. Not only do we consume the milk, and I'm obsessed with drinking cappuccinos, obviously with milk, I like to eat really, really good beef uh, from the cows as well. So this is a very cherished animal. I, I respect this animal because it really does provide us a lot. So how does Zoologist Perfumes cow smell like? Well, first of all, let me tell you the notes. It's got sage, apple, for top notes. Heart notes are milk, lily of the valley, heliotrope, violet, and jasmine. Base notes are cedarwood, vetiver, benzoin, musks, and amber. So you do experience this, definitely. It starts off with that aromatic herbal touch of the sage, a little green here, along with that green apple. There's a very green, juicy, tart, sweet kind of an apple note up top. It's a pretty good start, right? But here, we're starting to notice the milk. Milk comes in really pretty fast. So it's kind of taken over because milk is you know, I think milk is definitely running the show here along with the apple. Those are pretty key. And then Lily of the Valley comes in as well with the milk. Lily of the Valley is a green floral experience. And I think in addition to the sage, apple, and also the green in the Lily of the Valley together, you're having a very green experience. Plus lots of flowers. Lily of the Valley is pretty prominent here along with the jasmine, but then you also have heliotrope. Heliotrope is also here, which creates a little powdery experience. Heliotrope also adds light almondy touch to me. I always associate heliotrope flower with an almondiness. So not only do you get that powdery quality from it, you also get that uh, almondy touch. And it kind of blends well with the, uh, the the milk, obviously, almond milk, kind of a milk thing, you know. But it's not about almondinos. This is not that because basically Lily of the Valley and the apple and the milk are really blended really nicely together. When I'm in this section of the fragrance, uh, I, I think about... When I go to Japanese restaurants, when I'm checking out, there's these little bowls of little hard candies. I've had so many throughout my lifetime. Sometimes there is actually uh, a milky experience and a floral experience too with uh, some of those candies. It's all over the place. You know, there's some translucent ones and there's some kind of milky kind of, uh, milky kind of uh, lozenges. So there are flavors in there that I've had that kind of remind me of this particular uh, fragrance for some reason. So tastes, uh, you know, smells kind of go hand in hand. So I'm at this moment in time of the fragrance with the, within the heart notes and of course uh, the experience of the top notes, I feel like there's a candy-like, a floral candy-like experience here, but a very milky floral candy-like experience. Eventually the fragrance settles to woods. It does sweeten up a little bit. 
the benzoin, of course, and it does get a little ambery, and it's got lots of woods and musks here, but the milk, the lily, lily of the valley, and the apple are so prominent. And the sage, I think I would say too. For me, this is actually kind of dominating, even though you're experiencing the woody, musky, uh, you know, resinous touches or the ambery touches, those notes are pretty prominent. They're kind of like taking over and kind of blend together to create a kind of a woody amber musk experience with the addition of the milkiness, the floral touches, and of course the fruitiness from the apple. So interesting that this didn't go into the gourmand direction, which is kind of a breath of fresh air because uh, most of the time I experience milky fragrances, lactonic fragrances that do go gourmand. And I do love those, don't get me wrong. I really, really do love gourmand fragrances. But this is a unique take on this kind of a fragrance uh, that it doesn't necessarily have, have to be gourmand when it features a milk note, does it? So that's a kind of a unique thing. Uh, the other thing is, uh, obviously, you, you, I read you the, the, the base notes. There's no vanilla mentioned. So if the vanilla was added, I think the fragrance would have been a completely different fragrance. And I don't think it would have blended very well with the, the type of notes. There is benzoin, which is kind of sweet and vanillic in the base, but it's not a lot of benzoin here to, to kind of create like a vanilla overdose here. I think it's the right uh, fragrance, the right amount of experience in the fragrance. But one thing I do want to also stress is, I already mentioned it, it does have a very young experience to me. Young and playful. Are cows young and playful? Well, I, I guess if you look at the, the cow here on this uh, bottle, there, there's a little bit of a playful quality to this particular cow. But, you know, that's pretty much all I have to say. It's an intense fragrance, but this one actually, more for me, becomes a skin scent. Uh, it has lingering power, but unlike other fragrances from the brand, this one doesn't have a, it doesn't project too much. And I don't really discuss this kind of stuff because everybody has a different experience. I always say it's, it's, it's beast mode and somebody says, no, it's weak. And then I say the opposite, it's weak. And somebody says it's beast mode. So usually I, uh, test it out yourself to see how you experience this, this particular fragrance. But for me, it became close to the skin after the initial hour to two hours max uh, wore off. Uh, then you're basically left with something very close to the skin. Uh, it's not it's not one that screams loud But either way, that's all I have to say for cow uh, Latest release it's out now go check it out get a sample sample it You know you might experience something completely different the benzoin and the ambery touches might be a lot more prominent for you But for me, it's more about the top and the heart notes in this particular fragrance and how they blend with the base notes. Anyway, cow, and find out where it's gonna end up uh, on the list of my favorite zoologist perfumes coming right up. Uh, so I've got seven zoologist perfumes fragrances total in addition to cow, so there's a total of eight. There's a bon bonus fragrance with the seven, so you'll have to stick to uh, watch it, um, watch and find out what the bonus fragrance is after the outro. But we're gonna start off with Camel at number seven. So Camel is a, a fragrance that came out several years ago. And Camel in the next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about, I have a review on the channel with Dahlia. If you like watching reviews of her and, uh, uh, fragrances with her and I, go catch those reviews. But they are older, they were shot in my house. And now, you know, obviously there's a separate place for me to do these. So the audio is not as good over there as it is here. But Camel is a great smelling, warm, spicy, sweet amber fragrance. And it features dried fruits, myrrh, dates, frankincense, civet, amber, cinnamon, jasmine. For me, this is a very dried fruity experience. Whereas in Cow, you have that fresh experience of the apples. Here you can totally smell the denseness and the dryness. More concentrated kind of an experience, which also kind of leads to an ambery experience of the dried fruits in this but it's lots of dried fruits with dates you totally you totally get the fruitiness in this but it's blended with frankincense and myrrh so there's lots of lots of resins in here it's a very very smoky experience as well so it's a nice contrast to dried fruits and the smokiness right but there is that civet it does get animalic you definitely experience it definitely do and it eventually blends to become an ambery experience so it sells to an amber I would call this an amber it's very ambery experience then you have that jasmine adds a little light and endolic touch in there and then the spiciness from the cinnamon that also adds more warmth to the fragrance it's a great smelling amber fragrance it's unfortunately at number seven because sometimes when I wear this one the civet is a little strong on me so if you like it animalic check it out if you don't then you know Go for this and see how it is because uh, some people, you know, people, I shouldn't say some people, people experience fragrances differently. I'm getting a lot of civet on me occasionally, but every once in a while it's just more fruits and amber and uh, resins and smoke. But either way, seven, camel. 
Moving on to number six, it's Elephant. And yes, Elephant and Camel I have reviewed with Dahlia on the channel. You can go catch those. So Elephant is a green woody powdery fragrance with green leaves, Darjeeling tea, coconut, magnolia, cacao, sandalwood, and musk. It's a very, very cozy experience. And I don't know if it's because elephants seem like they're, when you look at elephants, there's something calming about them, even though they're these big giant uh, animals, right? Uh, there's something uh, calming and soothing about them. And that's the way this particular fragrance wears. But it's an overdose of greens. It's a lot of greens, but the greens are kind of very gelatinous Like if you've ever cut through an aloe vera leaf, you can experience that kind of jelly like experience The fragrance experience on me is like that you it wears like that So it's very very interesting and that actually has a very soothing quality to begin with the, the aloe vera You put it on when you get you know sunburned and things like that along with Darjeeling tea tea is always a very cozy calming experience and fragrances and coconut we've got coconut here and magnolia and sandalwood and musk the whole experience is very very cozy but it's a green green overdose if that makes sense it's a great smell at number six it's elephant at number five very unique that I'm actually featuring this at number five it's not my style of fragrance but I really like the way that this fragrance has turned out it's squid squid is a warm spicy aquatic fragrance so you know, it's a unique kind of a fragrance because it's overdose of saltiness and marine qualities, but it eventually becomes ambery. And I like that about this particular fragrance. It features ambergris, salt, incense, black ink, pink pepper, apopanax, and benzoin. So it's a, it's a given that this would have ink as a note, right? To me, it's a little blue, but you know, that's just the, the, the coloring of this particular fragrance. It, it's definitely great that they've added the color to kind of give you that inky experience. And I really enjoy squid. I, I love calamari obviously I love to eat that stuff very fattening and very filling but it tastes really really great and I think the way the fragrance is composed I think the perfumer Celine Barrel has done a great job with it adding the ink adding that overdose of salts uh, the ambergris with its kind of saltiness and ambery kind of aquatic touches and then of course it's got some light resins running throughout it's some sweetness from this apopanax and benzoin and some spice from the black pepper or pink pepper either way squid is a great scent at number five I'm surprised it's so good uh, because you know normally I'm not a big fan of um, these kind of uh, fragrances, uh, aquatic marine fragrances. So at number four is the latest release, it's Cow. And I was telling you about this one, it's powdery lactonic green floral fragrance with milk, apple, lily of the valley, musks, sage, heliotrope, jasmine, vetiver, and violet. So yeah, it's a green overdose, and I think what's really running the show here is the milk, the apples, the lily of the valley, there's musks and sage, these are what's really running the show. But you do experience the touches of heliotrope, jasmine, vetiver, and violet as well. So cow is at number four. At number three, I'm surprised how much I really love this one, and the thing is, Victor from the brand as well just said, you're gonna really like this, please review it. And I'm like, okay, I think, it didn't really sound great to me, but as soon as I smelled it, I was shocked at how great it is. It's Macaque Yuzu Edition. So, so good, guys, really great. And it's an, it's an incense. And I, I, I love the idea of an incense fragrance. It reminds me of church, going to Christian Orthodox Church, because I grew up Christian Orthodox, and the smell of the incense there. But I, I really do have a challenging time wearing incense. It just doesn't, it's just not like a fragrance I want to wear over and over again, but I like the smell of it. Does that make sense? But this is a kind of incense fragrance that I really, really like because it's got that very bright, sparkling, bitter, spicy, zingy yuzu note and lots of it. So it's kind of like a citrus fragrance you can wear when it's warm outside with the addition of this kind of like contrasting uh, incense -y touches from the olibanum and myrrh plus the woods from the hinoki. What a great fragrance. I'm, just, I'm surprised at how great it is. It's a very, very wearable experience. And again, this incense is not one of my favorite styles even though I enjoy it. But here you have a great smelling incense fragrance that you can totally wear. But it does feature hinoki wood, yuzu, olibanum, myrrh, juniper berries, sandalwood, oak moss. Yeah, the sandalwood adds some light like creaminess in the base notes and it's a great wonderful wearing experience that I really really enjoy and one other thing I should say about this one you know people that like fragrances like uh, Huil from the house of Aesop and also Hinoki from uh, Comme des Garçons should look into this one this is not identical but it does feature that Hinoki and this incense touch but definitely has that yuzu, the yuzu brightness in here that makes it a lot easier so if you like those two fragrances definitely check out Macaque Yuzu Edition I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how great it is moving on on to number two, it's Chipmunk. 
Chipmunk is such a great nutty fragrance. I absolutely love this one. It was a surprise when it came out, but it's ultra woody and ultra nutty. So there's lots of nuts and woods in this particular one. And it does have that quince. And I experienced the quince in this one like it's a jam added to the nuts and the woods. Does that make sense? Like there's a jammy uh, experience. And typically quince doesn't have a great smell when you pick it off the tree or when you're near it, but it, you really have to like cook it. It has a bitter puckeriness about it when you put it in your mouth. And traditionally for us, we've always had jam with quince, which is here. And I experienced that quince like as in a jam form. So does that make sense? But anyway, either way, this is a woody, aromatic, earthy, nutty fragrance with hazelnuts, oak, chamomile, guyac wood, cedar, vetiver, amorous, benzoin. So there's not a lot of sweetness in this one. It's lots of woods and nuts, but you know, you have that amorous, the benzoin, and a little bit of that chamomile to have an herbal touch. Great smell. It's chipmunk at number two, and you probably know my number one. This is my favorite zoologist perfumes. It's B from zoologist perfumes. This one's created by Cristiano Canali. You know, I absolutely love this whole um, inspiration of the bee. This is a, a great inspiration. It's a very gourmand fragrance. Unlike cow, which I thought was going to go gourmand, this one absolutely goes gourmand to me. It's a honeyed, powdery, amber floral fragrance with the royal jelly accord, mimosa, benzoin, vanilla, labdanum, heliotrope. There's a very honeyed experience with mimosa flower. It really does kind of complement the royal jelly to add, to intensify the honeyed quality of the entire fragrance. But mimosa also has a light almondiness in there. Along with heliotrope, heliotrope has almondiness. So there's definitely almondy background in the fragrance. It eventually settles to a powdery amber experience with some woods, light woods, but I think it's a, a great smelling fragrance. Absolutely love, 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 love B. So it's B at number one. And that's the entire, uh, you know, series of fragrances. Stay tuned for the bonus after the outro. But, um, let me know your thoughts if you've uh, sampled cow yet and does it sound exciting to you to try. Uh, it is definitely a surprise with cow. Uh, I really enjoy it for its uniqueness and, and the fact that it didn't go gourmand. And I like that contrast of, you know, uh, the flowers, the green flowers and the green uh, fruitiness uh, of the apples. But let me know if you've sampled it. Let me know if you're enjoying it. and. Uh, let me know if, uh, you, since you haven't, uh, would you be interested in going and sampling. And let me know what is your favorite zoologist perfumes as well. Put a comment down. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, one bonus fragrance, as I said, this has actually kind of crept up and is becoming a, another favorite of mine from this house. And when I first reviewed this fragrance, I did have a little challenging time with it, but things happen with fragrances. Sometimes you might not like it at first, or you like it, but it's not, you know, something that you really love. And then you circle back to it, and it grows on you kind of a thing. So this is the fragrance uh, called Musk Deer, created by Pascal Garin. Initially, I thought this was pretty animalic on me and it was a little challenging to wear but for some reason my palette changes chemistry changes environment changes and I'm really appreciating the fra fragrance now it's a warm spicy woody musky fragrance with ambrette cardamom sandalwood calamus laos oud jasmine so I think it's the laos oud that's creating the animalic qualities in this particular fragrance and perhaps a little bit of the jasmine as well because they do have dirtiness in the jasmine some uh, indolic uh, touches but it's lots of ambrette to create this kind of a vegetal musk experience. There's light fruitiness there, a little, little, little medicinal touch as well. But lots of cardamom in this one and a very soothing, creamy sandalwood experience. And then there's some light vegetation, kind of a green uh, touch running throughout it as well with that calamus note. It's definitely a great scent. And, you know, who knows, it might end up uh, going into the top seven in the future. But for now, I wanted to feature it as a bonus fragrance because I think it's a great fragrance. Uh, it's interesting, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, but all these fragrances are animal inspired and they're not made with animalic notes and uh, the fact that this does have animalic qualities uh, and it doesn't have and feature animalic notes which is great because traditionally musk deers were used in fragrances to have that true uh, deer musk experience either way musk deer is the bonus fragrance for you guys to to look into all right thanks so much for watching today stay tuned for another video tomorrow goodbye